Okay, we're rolling. Right, firstly, I'm going to make this clear. I have been hit off my bike quite a few times before. I've had more than my fair share of incidents on the road, right? Some of it very scary, some of it afterwards the adrenaline was pumping and it enabled me to smash out that next 10k like you would not believe. That's something you've got to be in control of though, be in control of when the adrenaline starts pumping. Keep it calm man, keep it calm. I want to highlight three things in this video, alright? Bridges, traffic lights and helmet lights, what do they all have in common? Danger, that's what they have in common, alright? I don't want to put people off cycling, I just want to make it safer for them, alright? And bridges I've noticed lately, alright? Depending on where the bridge is and how much room there is, be aware as you're approaching the top of that bridge, what's coming up behind you, alright? Cars or drivers or traffic, or whatever they're driving, van, lorry, whatever, or even a motorcycle, if they're thinking with their head and they've got some road craft, road knowledge, and they've actually got a brain, they'll stay behind you until they're on the top of that bridge so they can see if there's nothing coming the other way to be able to overtake you safely, all right? But the drivers we're looking out for here are the ones that are starting to come out on the white line and they're intent on overtaking you on the same as a blind bend, blind bend, the blind point of a bridge. They can't see if there's anyone coming the other way. And there could be someone coming the other way, exactly like you, a cyclist, all right, and another car thinking the same. It's going to be a nasty head-on collision, isn't it? So my advice would be just exercise caution on that, because I have been experimenting with this, despite road positions and moving out more than 1.5 meters from the curb. Some people are really determined to get past, all right, and they go out even further to the point that they are on the other side of the road. And that's very dangerous, isn't it? Because they're either going to have a head on, uh, they might not be touching you at that point, all right? But if there's something coming the other way, they're going to swerve. And who are they going to hit? They're going to hit you, aren't they, all right? So just bear that in mind. Think about that. Observe. Look at what happens around you, traffic, and how it behaves, and how you can put your hand out and, well, I say try, because it's, it's, it's going to fail sometimes, because there's always that 1% of drivers that will not see what you're doing, will not pay attention to what you're trying to tell them, and they still come by, all right? So that's the number one. Number two is traffic lights, and again, depending on the set of lights and where they are, exercise caution again, man, or because the light's gone green, don't expect traffic that's supposed to be stopping on the red, to stop, okay? I've seen cars, you know, creep round corners before now, albeit if it's like five or 10 miles an hour, to cars going 30, 40, 50, 60 plus mile an hour through lights, all right? And that's not just as a cyclist, that's as a, as a pedestrian. Um, I can't say I've witnessed anything whilst driving before, but when, you, when you're a pedestrian or you're a cyclist, obviously you're going at a slower pace and you've got time to kind of look around more, which is a good thing, you know, versus in a car where you're getting, you're going the same speed as pretty much everything else, all right? So you've got to be thinking even faster, uh, again, in my opinion. So bear that in mind, traffic lights, or because it's green, don't assume it's safe to go through a set of lights, all right? Look around you, look at different lights, whether it's a zebra crossing on a straight road, you know, pedestrian crossing, all right, pelican crossing, there are different types of crossings. To so bridges, um, there's actually some good bridges where you can still cross on a red anyway because uh, of the nature of the, the road, narrow road, some of them have, have got cycle paths going up the side of the bridge, so you can pass whether it's green, amber, red, whatever, all right, which that's a good idea, they should do more of that, so cyclists can carry on their merry way. So that's number two, traffic lights. Number three is, I mentioned helmet lights, all right? Helmet lights are a great idea. What if you have a mechanical? You can look around and see what you're doing, all right? Obviously, if it's nighttime, all right? Daytime, you still have a helmet light, but you're going to see mechanical. Not a problem, all right? Um, the problem comes where if you are traveling at speed and a car approaches a junction, you might have a helmet light on and another handlebar light. Again, that's something else I just recommend if you're cycling at, light, um, at night, have two lights on the go, all right? 
Well, that's two constants, one sort of strobe or pulse rather. You don't want to have a strobe on at night, it's very distracting to drivers. Just like a pulse or a flash. And then one constant running as well. Again with your rear lights. Um, so yeah, back to the helmet lights. A, a car can quite clearly see two sets of lights, helmet lights, so they associate that with cyclists. And sometimes that can go against you as far as, oh, he's not traveling fast, I'll pull out in front of him, all right? So again, that's something to bear in mind, all right? Helmet, light are, helmet lights are good, but also in built-up areas. It doesn't have to be built-up area, does it? Uh, in a remote area, you're going down a slight slope, or you are on the flat and you're building up some speed, 30, 40 miles an hour, whatever, and you're approaching a junction, you only want that one car, don't you? So the, you know, a lot of things people tend to do now, I've noticed, they get to a road junction um, and they think like that one quick glance is enough, you know, it's the same as, you know, if you are in a car and you are moving on, if you are on a motorbike or bicycle or whatever, that one quick glance doesn't really give them an idea of how fast you're moving. And sometimes the annoying thing is there might not be nothing behind you, you know, whether you're driving, you know, you are on a bike, like whatever, you're using the road, there'd be nothing behind you and all it would have, all it takes is just to stop at that junction, wait for you to pass and then they can pull out and carry on and do what they want to do, you know, but people just don't want to stop, do they? Don't want to stop, so really you've got to be looking out for that. As I said before, I don't think it's going to get any better. You have to get better. You have to, you know, learn stuff that's not necessarily in the highway code because people aren't obeying the highway code, unfortunately. So you have to kind of learn new skills to be defensive on the road, to get to where you, from your point A to your point B, as safe as possible. Um, I'm not saying ride dangerously or anything, but you have to ride aggressively, be vigilant, and you just look out for the things I've explained, all right? So I hope that's helped some people. Uh, love to hear from anybody if you want to comment down below, if this has got any value this video, which I think it has, because we want to be as safe as possible, don't we? We want to get home alive and see another great day on planet Earth. Give it a like. And yeah, I do some more videos like this. There's plenty more things I can share, plenty more ideas to uh, help people learn some better road craft while out and about in traffic or not in traffic, because as I said, you only want that one car, don't you? See you later. <laughs>